for joining me on the Ghanaian Farmer. It's another insightful week and we are coming to talk to you about the kind of feed you can give to your livestock because in recent times it's become very challenging with fire outbreak, with the drought and every other thing. Livestock farmers are beginning to wonder what can we give our livestock to give them the weight, to give them the nutrients and the size so when you get to the market, you get value for money. And that's why we are all the way in Brekum visiting farming in Africa. They are into livestock farming and the revolution they are bringing in this industry is pretty much exciting. They have a specific unique feed that they have produced for all livestock farmers. And so if you're out there, this is the interview you are supposed to watch. Watch, subscribe, and share the link. I'm going to be chit chatting with Fred to find out from him how he discovered or came by this feed. How well do I actually plant it, nurture it, and start feeding my livestock? So let's go meet Fred and find out from him when the story started. What even, you know, sparked that interest for him to start growing or producing feed for livestock farmers? Hello, Fred. <laughs> nice meeting you again. Nice to meet now, you. So, so, you know, in Ghana, yeah. we do a lot of livestock farming. Yes. But what we also know is usually they are free. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So they can travel as far as they can yeah. and then go and look for something to eat. Yeah. And then they come back. Yeah. But in recent times, I've realized, monitoring your channel, yeah. I realized that you are doing something unique. Yeah. And it has to do with the Semencia grass. Yeah. Now, tell me about this concept and when it actually bettered or started. Yeah, thank you very much. And hi to everybody mm -hmm. that I've been watching, um, the Ghanaian farmer. Yeah. Um, I am a fan too. So, right. um, But I think it all started when I wanted to go into livestock farming. Okay. And I, when, I, when I thought about, when the idea came <laughs> or the interest came, one thing that really turned me off was how livestock farming was being done in Ghana. Okay. As you rightly said, mm -hmm. random grazing. Yes. My community is a farming community. Mm -hmm. My mom is a farmer and I grew up growing crops. Okay. So if I'm going to go into livestock farming, mm -hmm. the biggest challenge that all the cattle farmers have here is feed. Mm -hmm. So they are always running into problem with other farmers where they are going into their farm to destroy their farm, to eat their crops. And I don't think that is fair. No. You cannot, you know, profit from your business at the downfall of others. Another person. So to me, mm -hmm. I, I didn't, that didn't sit well with me. So okay. I said, no, I can't, I can't do this. Mm. There might be a reason. Okay. So I went to the U.S. Okay. Um, and went to Southern California, started mm -hmm. visiting cattle farmers yeah. to say, hey, I'm from Ghana. Mm -hmm. I want to go into livestock farming, mm -hmm. but how do you guys do it? How okay. are you able to grow livestock without them roaming? Because yeah. when I came, I didn't see any cows till I came to your ranch. Mm -hmm. And I saw that, you know, they were feeding them. They have feed lots where they were giving them food and water. Mm. So I was like, okay, great. How do I do this? All the ingredients they were mentioning to me were things I couldn't, assess okay i was like if i come to ghana nobody will, i won't find these things here That's so cool. what do i do mm. so i continue doing more research mm -hmm. and then i came to this seed mm -hmm. in mexico mm. so i went to mexico and they told me that this seed actually came from uganda wow yes it's from actually from, Africa. yes <laughs> from uganda okay. but taken to mexico and brazil colombia mm -hmm. and they are growing that to mm. feed all their livestock goats, cattle, sheep, and everything. Mm. I was like, really? Give me some, let me come and try and see. Okay. So I brought the seed here, and to be honest, this is the exact place where we planted the seed. Okay. So we just planted it around this, where I have the chicken yeah. um, um, pen. And people were laughing at me. Mm. They thought I was crazy. They're like, why are you planting grass? Grass. <laughs> like, we are trying to get rid of the grass we yeah. have here. Why yeah. are you, you know, but then I planted it. It became very nice mm -hmm. i started feeding it with my goats i saw that they were improving okay. even milk goats and 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 cattle that couldn't produce enough milk for their babies mm -hmm. were feeding them well so mm -hmm. i was like okay this is good so then i started you know um uprooting it mm. dividing it into pieces mm -hmm. and basically transplanting it okay oh, so before we dive yeah. into uh -huh. it proper mm -hmm. um this grass you're mentioning yeah. 
what kind of land is good yeah. for planting this grass? So any farmland. Okay. I, I usually even tell people not to plant it in swampy areas. Okay. But I went to Tamale mm. recently mm. and um, a lady that I've actually, he's on YouTube as well, farming, okay. uh, um, um, what's the name? Mm -hmm. um, um, I can't remember his name, okay. but when it comes, I will let you know. Right. And you name me, you name me, yes. Okay. Um, she, all right, we are in a good farm, so sorry oh, no. with all the it's baby goats. Um, yeah, fine. <laughs> but he had planted it in a very swampy area, mm -hmm. and the grass were doing perfect. Okay. So I have seen this grass grow everywhere, mm. you know, but obviously if you want the best, you want to plant it mm. at the very fertile land. Mm. I never use fertilizer. Okay. But again, if you want to have better yield, mm -hmm. you can use fertilizer as well. But okay. so far, so good. Right. It's, it's all around Ghana and it's doing well in the north, in the south, okay. in the middle bed and right. anywhere. How about the land preparation? As yeah. any other farming, yeah. before you start, you yeah. need to till the land yeah. and let it spare the rains before you do yeah. either your nursery transplanting or direct yeah. planting. Yeah. How about this grass? Do I yeah. need to also get a tractor yeah. to prepare my land and do all the co yeah. before I plant it? No, you don't. Okay. So there are two ways to plant this mm. grass. So the seeds, mm -hmm. you can actually plant it like you plant maize, corn. Okay. So you put four mm. in each hole, mm. intervals of about one feet mm -hmm. interval, both um, vertical and right. horizontal. Okay. And then, you know, it will grow and you just have to clear the weed mm. one time mm. and then it will cover the land. Okay. Or you can decide to nurse it. Okay. That is you making a small bed, yeah. sprinkle it on mm -hmm. it, you know, water it, mm -hmm. and in about five days it will mm -hmm. grow. Okay. Once it grow, you uproot it, mm -hmm. cut the top off, mm -hmm. you know, and then replant it okay. directly. So you can choose depending on you, the farmer. Obviously, if mm -hmm. you want it to be more effective, mm -hmm. you have to transplant it because then you can transplant it nicely and, mm -hmm. and make better use of your land. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that a lot of animals eat this grass. Mm. My mom planted it in at the house. The chicken ate everything. Oh, Jesus. You know, <laughs> you put it on the soil, squirrels, lizard will come and take it. Okay. Yeah, so again, you have to protect it the same way when you plant a maize, okay. right? To make sure that um, it's not eaten. Right. Yeah. So, viewers, I'll be taking you closer to where some of the grass are. Mm. They are looking very green. And, and mind you, around this time of the year is the Hamatan season. Yeah. So a lot of grasses are looking yellow and dying off. But yeah. this grass is still looking fresh and green. Yeah. That's the difference we're talking about. So yeah. in times like this, a livestock farmer shouldn't be too bothered. Yeah. Now, is it what time of the year do I plant? Mm. Is it Do I wait for the rains before yeah. I plant? Or even in a dry time mm -hmm. like this, mm -hmm. I can still plant some extra grass? Obviously, it needs rain, you okay. know, to be able to grow. Mm. But once it's established, mm -hmm. then you don't need the rain. Mm. Um, it will not die. Okay. But obviously, so once you plant this grass mm -hmm. and it germinates, mm. every six weeks, mm. you'll be able to harvest mm. it and then it will regrow again. Okay. So every six weeks. Right. But in the dry season, it's mm. not going to grow as quicker okay. as it does in the rainy season. Okay. So that is the only disadvantage. But you right. plant it in the rainy mm -hmm. season, and then you basically let it continue to grow. Okay, so yeah. we're talking about seed for you to nurse, transplant, yeah. or direct planting. Yeah. So I'm going for a quick breather. When I come back, I'll let Fred bring you the seed yeah. for you to see how it looks like. Then from there, we'll move to where some of the grasses are for you to also see how it's looking like. This is still the Ghanaian farmer. And this week, the episode focuses on a unique seed that every livestock farmer here in Ghana, in Africa, Perhaps you are in Zambia, Zimbabwe, you yeah. don't know about it. You can reach out to us, come for some, go plant it and feed your livestock. But stay tuned. I'll be right back after this. Then you're still watching the Ghanaian farmer. My name is Enyunam, and this episode we are all the way in farming in Africa in Brekum, and we're discussing the unique feed that they are producing for their livestock farmers. So we mentioned about the seed that you can actually nurse or do direct planting. And so Fred has given me some samples of the seed. I'm going to invite him over to tell me why the seed is looking this pink because it looks like toffee. 
<laughs> if I leave this in the kitchen, my baby might go and get it and start, you know, eating it. I don't know how harmful or less harmful it is to human. But let me invite Fred to join me. Fred, so can you join me? Okay, so now I have the feed right here. This, yeah, is, the, the this is the seed. Seed, sorry. Yeah. So this is how the seed looks like. This is not how the seed looks like. Okay. This seed can come in any color. So okay. what we've done is we've mm -hmm. coated the seed. Right. You know, so that it doesn't go bad. Mm. So we can keep it on the shelf for mm -hmm. a bit longer. Mm. So that's why we've coated it. So this is mm. just a color coat. Okay. Yeah. So the okay. actual seed mm -hmm. is inside. Okay. So once you plant it mm -hmm. and it's in the soil, mm -hmm. the coat will remove mm. and the actual seed will basically start germinating. All right. So yeah. this is what I'm actually going to do uh, the nursery with. Yes. And then after five days, did you say? Yes. Okay, it yeah. germinates. It germinates. I cut the top yeah. and then I go and do my and transplanting. Do Why do you cut the top actually? You cut the top because mm. when the leaf is still on, mm -hmm. it would take a lot of strength. Okay. Because don't forget, mm -hmm. once you transplant it, mm -hmm. now the roots need mm -hmm. to take nutrients from the Okay, so this is the, the, is it this one? Yes. Okay, so let's so, get a bit closer. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can go here. This side. Okay. So once you transplant it, uh -huh. so you roots, can go on the other side yeah. so you can see the roots uh -huh. is gonna need nutrients from the soil okay. to help it germinate. That is if you don't cut the top if before you do you the cut planting. It or not, okay. The roots is gonna take mm. nutrients mm -hmm. from the ground mm. to germinate. Okay. When you have leaves right. or more leaves on top, okay. it will require more energy from the roots. Oh, okay. To feed all those leaves. Mm. To make it fresh mm. but if you cut the top mm -hmm. then it requires less energy okay so that's why we try to cut the top so that it has this the stem right. and then the new leaves will then start growing okay yeah so how many kilos of this yeah. will i need to fill a one acre land so one kg one kg so you need one kg okay yeah. and if i'm doing the nursery yeah. how do i go but do i drop one 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 or i just spread it on the land so you just spread it okay the same way we do um pepper and right. tomatoes uh -huh. You can spread it, spread like an inch of soil on okay. top, or even put like palm tree mm. leaves on mm. top of it mm. so that it doesn't get direct sun. Okay. Water it morning and evening, mm. and then in five days it will germinate. Okay. Yeah. And after five days, it's ready for transplanting. After five days, it germinates. Okay. Then you have to give it about two, three weeks before, before then you can uproot it. Okay. You know, the same process with mm. pepper tomatoes. Mm -hmm. It germinates, mm. then you let it grow to mm -hmm. maybe five inches okay then now you can transplant it okay so when we transplant yeah. how long does it take for me to see my grass fully mature this yeah. way so you're looking about four to six weeks okay four to six weeks so like a month mm -hmm. um, and two weeks mm -hmm. it should be fully germinated we cut it at four feet okay. so it grows to about four feet uh -huh. and then we will cut it off because okay. the taller it grows mm -hmm. it loses its nutrients uh-huh because okay. it's struggling. Again, the same nutrients from the soil is yes. what is feeding the whole plant. Okay. So you don't want it to grow too tall. Right. right? So there are two ways to also deal mm. with this grass. You can allow your goats or cattle to feed directly mm. on it, like our goats are doing. Yeah. Or you can cut it, mm. store it mm -hmm. as hay, mm. and then feed it, you know, over time. Okay. So I'll also let you see how, when it is harvested, yeah. dried, and stored as the hay, how it looks like. Yeah. However, when I cut it, yeah. will it grow again? Yes. Or oh, that's it? No, no, no. Once you cut it mm. in, um, in about six weeks again, mm -hmm. it will regrow. Okay. So the moment you cut it, right. if you're in the rainy season, sometimes three to four weeks, okay. it grows back again. Right. In the dry season, it will take a bit longer to grow back again, okay. but you can cut it and it will grow. It can last up to about 17 years. The grass? Yes. Do I need to be applying fertilizer in course of this 17 years? Or no. Is, is again, okay? it depends on your soil okay. and it depends on how quick you want the regenerating mm. process to be as mm. well. Here, we don't apply any fertilizer. I have never applied it's anything. It's purely organic. It's purely organic. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I know you mentioned that that a lot of livestock can actually eat it. Yeah. But please run me through some of the livestock that can actually eat this. Yeah. So I'll start with the most smaller mm. ones. Yeah. So you can look at your rabbits, okay. whether dry mm. or fresh green like this, mm -hmm. they, will, they will eat it. Mm. Um, now you're looking at your grass cutters. Okay. So I know there are a lot of grass cutter farmers mm -hmm. out there too. Mm. Um, from there, you're looking at obviously your goats, mm. your sheep. Mm -hmm. Other people also give it to pigs as okay. well. And then obviously your um, your cattle. Oh, that's yeah. a lot. Yes. 
That's a lot. Yes. Okay. So, if I want to invest into this, yeah. is it a viable business? With, I'm actually, with a, a huge market demand? Yes. I'm actually looking for somebody uh -huh. who will come and say, I want to set up a hay production in Ghana. Okay. Because we do sell hay as well, the bundles that we've made. Yeah. And it's not enough okay. because we have, you know, a huge stock. So we are feeding to our livestock. Mm. We know how many bales we need in a mm -hmm. year to feed our goats. Mm. So we don't want to sell. Okay. But people constantly are reaching out to us. Mm -hmm. Like we want some hay. I just bought some goats. I, my grass is not ready. Mm. And we are selling, but it's still not enough mm. for us to sell. Mm. So I would really love it if somebody has the land okay. and is willing to plant it, mm. harvest it, mm -hmm. dry it. Mm -hmm. You know, let's go to like Serco, mm -hmm. Medina, yeah. all those Where guys goat that are selling are. goats. Yeah. You know that every they morning... They go a long way exactly. to go and look for feed for exactly. their livestock. Exactly. So this is a viable business that Serious. you can actually consider Serious. and invest your money into. Serious. Okay, I know that just like any other yeah. uh, crop, yeah. This is also a grass though, yeah. but does it have any insect that attack it at a point or it is okay? No, is that it strong? is all okay. Okay. We have never sprayed it. Mm. We have never used any okay. uh, pesticide, mm. nothing. Okay. Yeah. I um, introduced this. Mm. We actually went to the Ministry of Agri, okay. so we work with um, the pets, um, pest and pesticides, something in Pokwase, mm. um, again mm. around this grass to make mm. sure that it is free of any foreign okay. or non-indigenous pets yeah. um, before we brought it in as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how much is this sold? Uh, yeah. The kilo. Yeah. How much is this sold? And yeah. eating it fresh versus yeah. eating it dried. Yeah. Does the nutrients differ or it is the same? No, it does differ. So it, it look at your grains. So mm. if you have soya beans, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you have um, corn, mm -hmm. the more you dry, the better the, the content, the nutritious content in. Okay. Right? So what we are trying to do, if you dry it, mm. the protein content can go all the way up to 18%. Okay. Protein. Yeah. Right. Our normal grass here is four mm. percent. Mm. So you can see the vice difference between this grass yeah. and the normal grass that we have here. Okay. Right. So if you dry it, it is way, way much better mm. um, than fresh. But obviously the mm. goats and livestock like it fresh mm. because it's juicier. Yeah. Right. It has a lot of liquid. But as a farmer wanting the best from them, mm. I want them to eat it when the protein content is actually much higher. Okay. So what we do is mm. we will allow them to graze mm -hmm. in the afternoon mm. and then in the evening we'll give them the dry version as well okay. and they will eat that throughout the night. Okay, so when I harvest this, when yeah. I cut them, yeah. um, how long does it take to dry? And when yeah. it dries, yeah. under what temperature yeah. should I keep it to stay, still have that nutrient before I sell to my customers? Yeah, so once you cut it, mm -hmm. we what we do is basically leave it in the sun mm. for about two to three days okay. if it doesn't rain right. it depends on the sun okay. but the moment two to three days we then gather it mm. and we bale it okay. so after baling we just have to store it at a temperature where it does not get wet okay so we store it a in, in a dry place okay. right room temperature mm. and you're good to go okay yeah. so the bale um how much is the the weight is what the weight is about 25 to 30 kg and it's going for how much so we sell it at our shop for about 150 cities okay yes the extra disadvantage, the reason why we don't like selling mm -hmm. the hay mm -hmm. also is that, mm -hmm. look at where we are. Mm -hmm. So if we harvest here, yes. so we have about 130 acres just of this grass. Okay. We harvest, we process, we bring it from there to this farm. Mm. That farm is about one hour away from yeah. here. Then taking it from here to Accra, mm -hmm. the truck that actually takes the hay from here to Accra mm -hmm. is charging us about 10,000 cities. So by the time it gets to Accra, Charlie, it doesn't even make sense I to know, sell it. I know. The tractor right. you use to harvest, okay. you harvest, mm -hmm. you use a rake mm. to turn it around mm -hmm. to make sure that it all dry perfectly. Mm. After that, you use a baler to bale it into yeah. rows. Then you use the trailer to bring it from the farm. So it doesn't make sense to us. I know. So if you have a land uh -huh. in um, Volta region, Central, mm. Eastern, mm. closer to Accra, mm. 
we will sell it for you. We will okay. buy from you and wow. sell it. But okay. we don't have that huge land there. Okay. And therefore, it doesn't make sense with all the transportation costs to okay. really sell it. Okay. Yeah. Fred, aside yeah. it being harvested fresh, the yeah. grass. Yeah. So let, let viewers see, see the grass that we are talking yeah. about. Aside it being harvested fresh, yeah. either fed to them this way yeah. or dried, yeah. what other feed can you make? What other thing do you make from the grass? Yeah. So... The grass has protein, has okay. a bit of fiber, okay. but it is not enough. Okay. You cannot feed all of it mm -hmm. to your um, goat. Mm. So you need to be able to add other minerals. Okay. So goats, calcium, mm -hmm. phosphorus, mm -hmm. potassium, manganese, mm -hmm. copper, zinc, selenium are very, very important in, in, in livestock farming. Mm. Then those are your macro minerals okay. then you have your vitamins mm. right um a b and mm. so on mm. then you have your iron okay. so sometimes let me tell you this you see a goat on the street trying to eat plastic mm -hmm. what that goat is trying to get is salt okay because somebody has ate some wache or something yes. and he's trying to get that mineral but he's not getting mm. because if a goat comes to pick mineral from um, salt from your house you'll <laughs> kill it yeah exactly but that goat needs that to be able to survive to grow the well I to see. be able to nurture the baby is pregnant yeah. with yeah. right so as we are giving this mm -hmm. this is not enough okay what we've gone a step ahead to do is that we actually took this plant, okay. our corn, right. our soya beans, okay. our wheat bran to right. South Africa, okay. and then let them test it to mm. see all the macro minerals they have mm. and what is not in there that the goats need. Mm. Then out of that, they design what we call the micro pack. Okay. So we come and we then add it to this grass and the raw materials we have here and form these pallets. Oh, I see. Interesting. So then this pallet now becomes everything a livestock need mm -hmm. to not lack to not be deficient in any mineral I see. so we don't feed this as their main feed okay they will eat the grass, grass. and get full okay. but early morning uh -huh. we every goat eats one per, no three to four percent of their body weight okay. so every morning we give them this 0.2 percent mm -hmm. of their body weight okay. so that they get the nutrients they need mm. just like human beings mm -hmm. you eat orange to mm -hmm. get your vitamins mm -hmm. you eat meat to get your protein mm. everything is here so as they go out even if they don't get any minerals mm -hmm. they come and eat this they have sufficient minerals to grow i see that's interesting <laughs> this is really interesting yeah. so um how many of this let's assume that me, I just want to eat my goat uh, during festive season. Yeah. So I'm keeping, let's say, five of those. Yeah. Um, how many of this should I be feeding them every morning? As I said, you need to weigh your goat first. Okay. Once you weigh your goat mm. and you know your goat. So mm. an every age um, of a goat mm -hmm. here, um, weight mm. is about 15 kg. Okay. So a 15 kg, you have to feed him 3% of 15 kg every day. Every day. Yes. Okay. So the boa goats mm. are what? Are about maybe 45 to 60 mm. we give them about one kg every single day okay. of feed okay yeah. but how come mm. they cannot rely on just this one or just the grass and they have to combine the two they can rely on just this one okay but you want to minimize your cost so here at uh -huh. the farm i know how much i spend on each goat okay. every day and every month okay so as a businessman yes. i know that hey a west african dwarf cost me three cds a week okay. or one CD a day. Yeah. So I'm putting that investment mm. and I'm hoping that at the end of eight months, I will sell that West African mm. at this cost. Mm. Okay, <laughs> so that's it. Fred, he's a CEO and a team lead for farming in Africa. And he's been doing a lot of interesting things when it comes to livestock farming. This is one particular feed that every livestock farmer needs to get. If you are here in Ghana, wherever you find yourself, he says it doesn't matter the soil or the land. All that you need to do is that demarcate a portion of your land and come and buy the seed of this semensual grass. You either nest and transplant or you can do direct planting. And after a few weeks, you are good to go. Forget about uh, dry season. Your goat, your cow, your grass cutter. I know of grass cutter farmers who told me, listen, yeah, you know, during the, rice, the dry season, we have to travel the distance we have to go to go and get feed. I don't know if you go there, 
the blows we exchange because we need to get the corn stocks for our you know grass cutter so if you're out there and you're into any of this livestock farming this is good news for you you want to look for farming in africa on all their social media platform and get the 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 seed to go and plant whilst you also supplement it with this feed that they have actually produced it is what we need to help revolutionize and increase or bring the commercial farming version of livestock farming my name is Enyunam, and so i'm going back to fred let's wrap up on this um semenshaw grass that they are producing here in their farm and then if you are interested in getting into the commercial beat you know when it mention farming um, everybody want to do tomato onions i want to do goats enough of the production of the commodity but you should find other means to invest and livestock farmers need this there is huge market in fact he's ready to help you sell so you can say that i'm taking let's say 20 or 30 acres of farmland and all i'm going to do is to produce this grass for fred to come and buy and sell for me so let's get closer to fred and uh, wrap up on the interview i'm going for a quick breather when i come back my cameraman says you're going to sip water when i come back i'll be going to fred so that we wrap up on the feed that he's producing here in samensha farm <laughs> an interesting and an insightful you know interview we just had with Fred about the feed they are producing here to help livestock farmers reduce the stress anxiety that you go through thinking about when is my animal returning especially cow farmers when is the full animal bringing it back when <laughs> when is it coming so nobody will take it and eat it? this is the solution that you've all been waiting for and so i'm going to call fred to join me now so that we can wrap up on how you can find him if you want him to even put a budget together for you in case you decide to go into just the production of the grass let's say 20 30 50 acres of the grass how can he be of help so fred join me now um so this has been very interesting and eye-opening and i'm sure that other livestock farmers who watch this will be very grateful for this video. So finally, mm -hmm. if I want to go into just the production of the grass, yeah. um, is there a specific place you would recommend or anywhere in the region I can produce mm -hmm. it? Um, you can produce it anywhere in the region. Okay. Um, what I would recommend mm -hmm. is since it's a crop mm -hmm. and we have dry season in Ghana, yeah. you want to be by water. Okay. So that because you're doing that, um, so you don't need a specific re region. It definitely grows everywhere. But um, as a commercial farmer, you want the best out of it, and you want to be able to produce all year round. Therefore, the only recommendation I'll give is if you have a place that is closer to a water source for irrigation, then it will help you in the dry season to be able to produce more frequently, just like the rainy season. It won't die, you will harvest, but it won't be as frequent as the rainy season. So with a water source, you'll be able to produce much, much better. Where can we find you? I'm sure people still have a lot more to ask in yeah. case they want to locate you and contact you for more. Yeah. Where can we find you? So on all social media platforms, on YouTube, um, Farming in Africa, TikTok, Facebook, it's all Farming in Africa. Um, our fiscal location in Ghana, we are in Achimota. In Nigeria, we are in Lagos and in Abuja. In Uganda, we are in Kampala. In South Africa, we are in Joburg as well. So just get in touch with us um, and we will be able to help you. Okay, so that's it. Fred, he is a team lead and a CEO at Farming in Africa or Shamansha Farms. And he's been doing a lot of interesting things, especially for livestock farmers. So, hey, um, if you don't have the heart to rear the goat, the cow, the pig or the grass cutter, why don't you look at the area of helping the farmers to get feed for their livestock? So you invest into the area of producing the grass and that's it the only secret is that make sure you get where there is water so you can be able to actually produce even in the dry season to meet demand of course my name is Anina and this is the Ghanaian farmer if you're out there and this is your first time on my channel 
your most welcome feel at home. Relax whilst watching the video. Don't forget to share and subscribe. I'll see you next week. Until then, it's a bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.